we're adopting what? By, well, say, taking care of the environment or, um, or whatever. Oh, I was a mere suggestion. I, I, yeah. I didn't see, I didn't want to sound like I was just trying to say the issue should be brushed aside. I thought there may be a, a place for dealing with it that wouldn't necessarily fire up the conflict in all of us. Well, what is the conflict? Can we, why, why are we not able to simply see the conflict? Why should we presume a frailty or a, a, a lack? Or that we can't withstand the conflict? My, my goodness. Uh, that, that is the question. That yeah. is the question. However, is it wise to congregate like this and ask it verbally? Then how? Excuse me? How to proceed? Well, see, I'm not. That's that's a. Uh, I understand that's that. Beyond the question. Uh, question. You needn't be cautious with me. I understand. Uh, you, be, you can also be direct with me. Then I'm put myself in a position where, um, if the conflict is accentuated by my appearance, then so be it. I'm in that position, and in some measure, you've put yourself in that position by coming. You say. Uh, there is something I'm interested in. Something is happening in my life, or it's not happening in my life. I need to know. In that, we have stepped into the midst of the storm. Now, I try not to exceed the circumstance. I take into account what you're saying. and I wouldn't want to overload the brain or the situation. But there's a strong possibility that when one's life is accentuated, the conflict also is accentuated. When you become aware, when you meet a being that is so alive that as part of his or her life you feel alive, you can be in trouble because now you were just breathing automatically and now you need to know about breathing. Uh, your blood was going through your body with no problem. Now you're aware of your bloodstream, you're aware of your heart, you're aware of your brain operating. You were making choices before that point with no problem. Just because you grew up in a certain neighborhood, you ate this sort of food and there was no problem in your choice. Now you come to understand that there's a strong possibility that it's all mechanical behavior. You're aware of being alive without a how-to, without a manual, without a breathing technique, without a, without a uniform, without any kind of way to grace yourself or to uh, expand yourself because of it. You're just simply aware that you are alive. When does this happen? It can happen right now, it's, that's the fact. It's just, it's just a realization of a fact. It can really be a problem, or a pain in the neck. But it's still the fact. Now it's very possible that I say, look, I can't take the fact that I'm alive, I can't bear it. The whole idea that I breathe is a real difficulty to me. And if I'm going to be aware of my breathing all damn day, I'm going to have a, I, I won't be able to fall asleep. I'll be afraid <laughs> that I'll stop breathing. And it's happened to me as a child. I would, in a movie theater, I remember once I became aware I was breathing. And I, it destroyed the movie for me. I didn't know what to do. I, I was trying to breathe until I had to forget that I was breathing so that I could enjoy the movie again. And this would happen to me periodically in my childhood. That See, I would I, become I, aware I was eating, I would become aware I was breathing, and it would destroy the meal or destroy my activity. Now, why should we feel that that's not what we're doing here, is becoming aware of our breathing? So yes. Uh, intensifying the absurdity already in our life, you know? Yes. So I'm saying that basically awareness may appear to complicate a life that is slowly fading out. Let me go to my grave <laughs> quietly. So I am saying that through our interaction, some of us may become intensely aware of the fact that we're alive. And it may appear to complicate our life. Mm -hmm. 
isn't there a way to be more simple about this? Yeah, I think that's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> attempting to uh, do it that. It feels uh, complicated to me. It is complicated. Yeah, uh, so yeah. couldn't we do it in a less complicated way? And become aware that we're alive? <laughs> Maybe Please. not stew about it? Hmm? Well, it feels like there hmm. could be a, a real built-in capacity to stew about all of this. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, that's the kind of thing that I, I wish I could be awake and um, vitalizing and observing okay. um, and expanding in, in a more simple way. Okay. Let's, let's do it. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> you see, um, there are interesting things. I've become aware I'm alive intensely. And now I move through the society or through the world. And I see there are forms that I must learn about. I see that there are relationships, levels of reality. I go through customs on my way to India or France, and they ask me questions that seem to have nothing to do with life or anything. You see. So then I took precautions before going to France or before going to India. You see, so I understand that, in, in fact, there is no France. In the essential reality, there is no India, there, that you need a passport, and things like that. But there are social realities that we've created. And how I move through that social reality is very important to me, because um, to the extent that I move through it freely, I'm free to move. <laughs> so essentially life is simple, but I move through a complexity. My response to the questions that are asked me are as complicated as the questioner. But what I'm seeing is quite simple. See. So, to me, I hear, look, if I become aware of my life, won't it possibly be a hassle? And I say, sure, it may be. Because you may, instead of doing things in a knee-jerk fashion, you may need to understand the principles of play. I may pay income tax. I may uh, get a passport. I may uh, need to deal with a bureaucracy. Or, uh, it seems so silly and crazy. It's almost a crazy aspect of it. But I am not crazy in the action. So I feel a simple person can move through the complexity. I had a, a comment to what he was talking about. Why come together? He was asking that question. And something for me, I find these groups very important. Maybe it might not be so much the question he asked, but in the interplay, there might be something for me that it would be just perfect. And it will open up my doors. And it has nothing to do with the conversation. And that's why I think we do come together. And, and there is, I do sense sometimes that just like we're talking about, you can rehash and talk about these things, and yet you can go too much, and yet there is value in it. So once again, it's both, wherever position you would like to take, or what you want to get from the evening. But there can also be a loveliness in the complexity. You know, the other morning we took a walk and a, a duck came running after us, <laughs> a bar a barking or quacking, you know. I don't know what it was. <laughs> Uh, a watch duck. <laughs> Whatever. What did it want? I don't know. We were just walking. So to me, that's really a complex thing that uh, to be attacked. I don't even know what would I say that I was attacked by a duck. Or <laughs> the whole idea of it seemed absurd that humankind can do anything, have a duck defend it, de defend the property or whatever. But it was a joke.
between us as we were walking, <laughs> the absurdity of it, and also the kind of uh, humor in it. <laughs> that folks have ducks guarding their property here as you're walking past this is uh, quite a fascinating thing. Uh, that I would want a duck to defend me is, <laughs> is absurd. And the whole idea of teaching a duck seems to me to be very complex in nature. <laughs> but at the same time, uh, it can, when we are on a, a mutual frequency together, it seems to me that we can uh, laugh in these things and, and really see the humor as we move together, the traps that are laid for us, the obstacles. Uh, are you saying we should duck certain issues? <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't go that far for it. <laughs> I heard this cute story about a, a man on a radio who's a DJ, and a woman who was a minister was talking about this story. And this man said, you know, some nights it's like being gummed by ducks. <laughs> you know, with people calling and having these absurd questions. And I thought about that duck. I mean, what damage could he do? Well, it Maybe seemed. Uh, I guess it was a goose. Uh, was it a goose? <laughs> a gander. A gander. I don't know. I'm not <laughs> But he looked like he can do damage. He had a mouth and a tongue. <laughs> but there was a... Uh, something shared in that. Uh, sort of joke or humor in it, and yet uh, it certainly is um, a very complicated sort of thing to do, it would seem to me. But I, I think that uh, being grounded in life, you can possibly pass through it all and relate to it and see how it's come about and why people do certain things. Never, but first you must be free of it, yes. A different question. Um, when I investigate these things and I come to a point where I feel that I need solitude and silence, because everything I do seems to be meaningless to me, every action causes more conflict, and I tend to then reverse it and take all that ego into withdrawal, withdrawing, and then I become isolated. And then from that, I see that this is not moving, and then I go out and start acting and cause conflict, and this goes back yeah. and forth. Sorry. It's very frustrating. Yeah, you see the dilemma. So it's, it's almost a force field, uh, you know, moving in opposites, mm -hmm. either withdrawal or expression. Again, and both equal the same thing. Uh, it may be that uh, because of our pressures, our self-created pressures, that we need to create a um, quiet place to reflect. But it's not reflective. It's an environment that we've created to calm down. The countryside, or we use the mountains, or whatever, to escape. Uh, we may need to do it, but let's at least understand what is happening in the process. That the friends you make will not be friends, and the isolated, peaceful place that you find will not be a peaceful uh, place. They're illusions that we're creating. And we may need to do it from time to time, but let us understand, that, let us not lie to ourselves what we're doing that the action of withdrawal or gregariousness are in fact incomplete actions that leave their residue. You can't withdraw for very long, and these friendships that you create when you try to go out and make friends will not be very friendly in time. <laughs> uh, I understand it. I've done it. I don't do it because I see its limitations. No. It feels impossible for me not to do that. It's like there's no other state, either one or the other. 
so then you'll need to do the impossible because that won't work. Can we understand that? What you will need to do in this life doesn't exist yet. <laughs> what you know is what you do. And you will now learn that what you know is not good enough. Can you see that? So what you, the framework you've inherited and the framework you now have won't, won't suffice. Uh, we're in that jam together. What we've inherited simply isn't enough, that's all. Something new must manifest in our lives. And um, to the extent that we can, we're preparing for that to happen. So that's our uh, mutual recognition when we meet. Uh, I know what you're doing. <laughs> you still may need to act out that trauma. There may be momentum that you have to go through the same thing. But um, once you recognize it for what it is, you won't be able to do it very long. It may seem like a long time, but it's on the way out. The challenge would be really that you replace it with something else that um, that in turn will continue it. You see, that you become something. Uh, <laughs> A real desire in us, you see, to exchange it for a better model, <laughs> or a newer model. <laughs> but uh, if if you can see the limitation in that, then it's a question of time. Well, will something naturally change by itself? It must come. If you... <laughs> um, If you see it, if you long for it, it must come. It must come. I, from my viewpoint, and um, life is not some trick or some evil thing or some dastardly force or something like that. Uh, it is a question of frequency. It is a question of being on a wavelength. Uh, as long as you're acting out and as long as you're, you have this escape system and approaches or whatever, then uh, you rely on that. When you see it's useless or whatever, then there is a quality of surrender and quiet. There is a waiting. My feeling is this, this, is this question of joining a group or a club or something like that, or, or uh, other than that, to Be self-destructive when there's no escape. Be careful of these two forms. In other so words, be uh, yes, uh, that the self dominates the existence. That if it sees that its old ways are no longer viable, that it starts to destroy itself. So be careful of that. Uh, you must still, uh, while you're waiting, you must take care of your health. Uh, eat correct foods. <laughs> take some walks and do some exercises. It's just a question of waiting. It's almost a form of detoxification, isn't it? <laughs> so you are still duty-bound to be responsible for the life. Uh, the habits must fall away. It's a question of time. Sometimes, um, the, the, I think the, the traps for me, I, when I come out and I see that I'm just isolated, and so I make a move outward, I will connect or set with somebody or something will happen and it will feel like it's real or like it's positive. And then I think, oh, you know, something's happening. Yes. Then, then I feel, you know, it, it, I hit my head against the wall. But it feels for a little bit like there's a movement. So that keeps me doing that because I get 
feedback or I get okay. a response. And then um, it doesn't really work. It's like an illusion. No, it only goes as far as you go. Uh, you, you can't want more in these contacts than you are. So as long as you're a frightened person, as long as you're desirous of getting out of your situation, then you meet folks in the same state who abuse that or um, utilize that or use it. You're using in your own sense, in a weak sense, and you meet some dominant characters, an opposite to you, or people in the same boat. We want more from the life than we are. We want more than our capacity to absorb. So it is a question of refinement in your part. It is a question of um, letting fall away what no longer applies. And the biggest difficulty for you will be to wait in a dynamic sort of waiting, because you have the feeling you're missing the boat. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but this question of wanting some strong person around that you can, that maybe uh, through association it'll rub off on you. Uh, no, you must bring some fruit to the meeting. You must bring some um, some quality to the association. If you bring a frightened, uh, ambitious person, then what you get is uh, an arm full of the same thing. So uh, it's very important. Uh, this waiting and this intensity is a kind of traditional purification. I, I see. I would not adopt any form, uh, but there is a kind of thing that happens in the yearning, in the desire, in the need for a, a developed life, a full life. One is moving in, um, in retrospect, you can see how these traditional forms have come about, what they meant. The question of detachment, uh, the question of non-ownership, the question of um, a devotional quality. But it would be trite to try to adopt forms. But in retrospect, after you've gone through it, you can see what has happened uh, with others, the experience that they had. You can see a similarity, possibly, in your life to a Buddha, or a Christ, or a Mirabai, or a... Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with yeah. uh, Mirabai, this, this question of just yearning, and uh, through that uh, great intensity, uh, just transforming oneself, lifting oneself out of their... Uh, Present their structure, just through the <laughs> desire. But that's that same sort of form is not available in, in, in a structured way. It would be a bit much <laughs> for us to bear. <laughs> to be around someone like Mirabai would be too much. <laughs> it's like an old movie, but you can see the um, the acting. But still, the need is great. The need to experience that may be great. So something is actually happening in the waiting. It's no longer killing time. There's a dynamic quality to that waiting. You know that what you were won't do, and yet there's no new um, form for you to take. It is very important that uh, uh, that you then have a routine of eating and, um, and exercise or whatever, just keeping your body in some sort of shape. And that's all? Well, that's quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> that's quite a bit. Go through it and say that's all. <laughs> You see, not give in to the pressure. The pressure is to self-improve mentally. Yeah. For me, the pressure is to take a course, to do okay. therapy, to do this, to change, to do this. You know, that if I don't do those things, I'm going to continue to be afraid, scared, withdrawn person only, that it will get more so. But the I'm choices you're making are coming out of fear. Right. So fear is inherent in your... Uh, not the joy of life. <laughs> it's not the love of life that is allowing you to select this course or that course. It's fear. So fear is, um, is 
colored your action. The course is then tinged with fear. So this is what is happening to us. This is all I'm saying. Is that can you? The waiting is to ensure balanced motive. You see that life is making the choice. What course do you need to take? Not that I'm frightened that I'm going to miss out or I'm a wallflower or that I'll be a crazy person. I'm always under threat. The, the psyche is always threatening me. You see. And so therefore my life is dominated by this, uh, I call it the, the psyche. It's saying, look, if I don't do this, uh, if you realize something, you're going to be in trouble. <laughs> it's always posing. It's always positing that it is necessary to your existence. You see, and that any understanding is going to be a, your undoing. You see, and so it's we're limiting ourselves because of it. It says, if you hear something, boy, be, you're going to be in trouble. So this is our problem now. Sanity threatens us. Love threatens us. The joy of life, understanding, realization is a threat to our well-being, according to our thoughts of ourselves. And sure it will be, yes, if you are in marriage and you need love, you could be in trouble. Because you won't accept habit if you need love in your life. You see, you may drive this fellow crazy. <laughs> when everything is just conditioned and uh, sort of reflexive, and now you introduce a, a death to the life. Sure. So there may be a time period when life does seem to be quite complicated, because you have just awakened to a, a need as, as important as breathing. And possibly the folks you're living with have no concern about it. And for you, the life is on the line. Every action that anyone takes in your home it affects you. You see how you're connected to all of it, and you have very little say-so over any of it. But uh, that can be transformed. I am positing that the intense individual in introduces intensity in the home, quietly, because if it's uh, expressed too loudly, you'll get a pump on the head for it. You'll get reaction. You'll drive the person further into reaction. But I feel the, uh, the awakened need for love can uh, create a loveliness uh, around it. And those individuals who will be able to move with that intensity will be the immediate relationship. You see, a marriage is not to be saved. Uh, family relationships are not to be rescued. But when one, you, you have responsibility to them. There's no doubt about that. But you're not responsible to sacrifice your life to anything. Your life is a precious thing. So the marriage actually is two lives that are moving together um, in intensity, not that you've taken a vow 20 years ago. You have a responsibility possibly to make sure as long as you have food, a person has food, as long as you have shelter. There's a social responsibility, but an essential responsibility is to be true to life. And that may be hard at times. You may feel the, the, the outward pressure may force even a greater degree of excellence from you. The, the excellence of discernment, the capacity to discern what is real. There's an interesting story I recall. A, a sadhu, a fellow, had practiced detachment or
and he had gotten down to a set of underwear, as I recall. <laughs> he only had what they call a lingoti, a covering in the genitals. And he couldn't go any further with his guru. Uh, his guru advised visiting this king, Janaka, who would teach him further about detachment. And when he arrived at the palace, uh, it was just so opulent and just so much was happening, he couldn't see that this fellow and the, the king <laughs> detached, he seemed to be <laughs> so attached to everything. <laughs> so he presented himself and the king gave him a room or whatever, and that evening uh, there was a fire and the king and everyone uh, left and the fellow tried to run back to his room to rescue his underwear. <laughs> so the king held him back. You see, and he demonstrated to him his attachment to his detachment. <laughs> the idea of his underwear being so great that he would run to risk his life. And the king had so much and he walked away from it. So he conveyed a sense of discernment being a real detachment the capacity to see what is real and what is false. Not the measurement of what you have, but your relationship to it. So these clinging to concepts, <coughs> defining ourselves by the concepts, becoming someone through the concepts, in fact, becomes the attachment that creates great sickness, generates great sickness for us. Moving from fear, you'll always choose the false. And then the false will become the problem. And how will we see that the fear is the question? So if what we want to, to manifest is we want the truth, then we'll have to be true. We'll have to be able to see truth. We'll have to understand our motives. In that, we're in the same boat. The need to discern, to see, what is essentially true is it's there for all of us. It's, uh, it's necessary for all of us. And there's no guarantee that we won't goof or make a mistake or get in trouble or whatever. Is there another evening uh, talk here scheduled? Uh?